Welcome to part five of the Super Donkey Kong Country Commentary. Um, I'm watching the Super Bowl, surprisingly. Huzzah! Nevertheless, welcome to the factory level where, good god, it is one of the most ridiculous you can... Okay, that was awesome. <laughs> and honestly, this little pole here, I've never figured out, um, what it does. Like, there's, and there's an area you can jump up to that has a barrel hidden, but I cannot for the life of me find it, so... Yeah, it's useless to me, but at least they have a TNT barrel. <laughs> The TNT barrels are pretty useful in this area. They can, they can be used to destroy the little oil barrels you see around here, which for some reason are filled with fire. <laughs> I'm figuring the uh, the idea for the oil barrels was probably from the original Donkey Kong for the NES and the arcade system because in stage one if there, they f it featured this um, oil barrel that had the same fire animation, surprisingly enough. And I'm figuring that's where they got it for this game, and I really have no opinion on that because I haven't really studied that per se. The music you're hearing here was also used for um, Wily's Dream Space, and Wily's Dream Space was a hack of Rockman 5, the Japanese version of Mega Man 5 on the Famicom. Which is downloadable, I will not supply you with a link, because I don't know where to find Wiley's Dream Space, sadly. But if you ever get a hold of that game, you'll find the stage to be pretty interesting. Probably the most 3D linear, in terms of graphics. It's definitely the best Mega Man stage you'll ever see in a series. It's Napalm Man stage, if you're wondering. For those who are playing the game blindly. <laughs> Now again, I have mentioned that Super DKC is famous for having rendered graphics. Um, surprisingly enough, the Sega Game Gear and Master System features this one game that I will get to later on called Sonic Blast. Now Sonic Blast, as we all know, is the, is the final game in the entire Game Gear library and Master System library. and. With the power of rendered graphics, it's the only real um, Sega game on a Game Gear and Master System with rendered graphics. And for an 8-bit game, that is actually pretty well strat- Can I say strategized here? It was well planned overall. And watch me, like, just blast through these cannons like it's- me barrels like it's nothing. <laughs> That's how skilled I've become in this game. Uh, I used to I used to be horrible at this game a while back. Like I didn't grow up on on the Super Famicom and um, Super Nintendo version. Even though yes, I have mentioned that I've like I have much more familiarity with the Super Famicom version only because that's the one I've played the most. But Going back to times where I have been playing this game on other systems, including the GBA and a few other things, this is strictly the only time that I can actually mention that. The Game Boy Advance version is the one I had the most trouble with. I'm, I don't know if it was because of its control scheme or its engine or whatever, but the way that they set up the Game Boy Advance version was awful. I mean, okay, I, I know I wanted to have a port of this game, but you made the physics a bit worse. How do you go from making a good game like this to making a worser version? By the way, I found out that these turkey vultures are actually called Neki. And that, um, Master Neki is a is apparently a flamingo, but I've already mentioned that now, haven't I? <laughs> the, the whole gimmick with this stage is you're constantly on this rolling platform. You can't fall off the platform, obviously, because you will die. And, oh yeah, another problem with the physics of this game. You know how in Super Mario Brothers, how when you... How when you're standing, um... Like, if you're just standing around in an enemy, apparently like flies right under Mario and it lands right on Mario's feet the enemy instantly dies that's not the case here if you're playing this game 
and coming in from playing like Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, 3 and World, you're playing a completely different game here. What you'll notice is that if you're standing in an area and you get in, the, in an enemy, if you touch an enemy and you're standing right above them, you'll still take damage. What kind of ignorant idea was this? What was Nintendo thinking? I mean, okay, I know, I know, yes, Miyamoto, you had good intentions while you were making this game, but you have to at least implement some stuff from the Mario games. I mean, at least we do have the bananas, which, like, after getting a hundred of them, obviously, you get a one-up. That was, that's really the only benefit. <laughs> Aside from that, there's really nothing useful. <laughs> Ugh. But I've been going off for about six minutes talking about nothing. This part is actually the most annoying. You have beavers and other kremlins walking from platforms in an attempt to kill you. Neil is say these little neckies around here. This is the part where I find is pretty ridiculous. I mean, how is anybody supposed to know that this barrel's here? And a new chomper enemy, uh, which apparently is a Kremlin, surprisingly enough. This Kremlin is surprisingly different than the blue one. When his invent when his or her inventability frames are completely disabled or whatever, um, he or she will jump when you jump. Which can catch you off guard in a certain stage in World 6. And trust me, World 6... If you're coming into this, like, for... If you're coming into this game after, like, six, nine months not even playing it, uh, this part will definitely catch you off guard that I'll be showing off in part six. But, god dang it. Also, also I do figure that the little neckies are 100% turkey vultures because I'm noticing what they're doing here is with it that they are shooting. They're shooting some kind of balls out of their mouth. No, not Mr. Bucket style. Not Mr. Bucket style. God dang it. But. <laughs> Yeah, it's like just shooting owl pellets or something, and it looks odd. It just looks odd. I don't like it one bit. I like how they add suspense using the music here. It is definitely... This is by far one of the better tracks of the game. My favorite track in the entire... Soundtrack of this game, however, is in fact the Donkey Kong, um... Yeah, the, yeah, the Donkey Kong Arcade Remix. That one is preferably my favorite one, but my favorite stage song is actually the Minecart stage music, surprisingly. And by Mankey Kong. <laughs> Mankey Kong is apparently the, um... He's not an evil Kong, I'm figuring what happened is, uh... Something happened in the family, and he decided to rebel. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Second to last cave stage, guys. Yay! <laughs> we are in the gold cave. Or, at least from my infrared TV screen, it looks gold. You're constantly being imploded by salamanders, which are constantly coming out of these little... Um, enemy spawning machines, which are metal barrels. 